Okay, welcome to another Patreon critique. Now, apparently, I I had already done it and then I recorded it, but it didn't record for some reason. So, I, you know, here's here's what I ended up with. So, I'm gonna uh, pretty much talk about this and kind of redo it um, and explain how I did this thing. So, the uh, yeah, this, this is from uh, the Patreon critiques and. Basically, it's like a landscape with uh, something happening. You got this uh, UFO or some kind of ship crashing through with an explosion and debris behind it. Um, and you got mountains or giant rocks and uh, sky. So the first thing that I noticed was that, you know, it, it's a bit bright. Like everything is really bright. And what I want to see is kind of like a, a value breakup that has, a, you know, a better read. So and here's what it looked like after I was done. Um, but how I did that was... You know, you could you could tell that the contrast between the dark sh uh, dark side the dark side of the the rocks is um, pretty contrasting against the light side, uh, and but if you look at the other version here, um, it's, it it kind of um, doesn't have that harshness that I'm looking for. So basically, what I did was I duplicated the layer, I lowered the the value of it, and so that's on its own layer now and I hit the mask tool and basically wherever there was shadow I, I just made it a bit darker right and I'm painting using white on this layer mask uh, you can see this over here and like so right and what happens is it creates a value pattern and what I mean if, by that is if you go to black and white it you can see almost like a checkerboard thing happening and it's dark light dark light dark light whereas if we turn off that layer it's it's there, but it's not as punchy, and um, and of, of course once you got it down, then you can sort of tweak it like I did uh, on this one, which is the final, um, because I added a layer of blue or like this kind of violet to push the stuff back into uh, distance. Um, people often ask me about how to make your images have a bit more depth, and the, you know the the very popular trick these days is to add a layer of atmospheric perspective, which is what this is, right? It's like a layer of fog. Um, so the same thing here is, as I'm doing here in the rocks, I would also do in the clouds. Um, you know, you have the dark side of the clouds, and it might seem too dark at first, but we can lighten it up later. But as long as you lay down the graphic pattern um, like this, then you start to have some interesting things going on right here. And if we make it black and white again, it starts to read really well um, versus that. So if this was on the wall, it probably wouldn't take as much attention as much as this one would because you have uh, graphic shapes kind of creating an interesting um, uh, pattern there. And uh, as human beings, we are actually programmed to pick up on things that have patterns like this. There's a book called Riveted that talks about this and also talks about why um, we respond to certain uh, shapes and why we like landscape paintings the most, or, or what are the reasons of us liking land landscape paintings, and especially if there's something in the foreground. It's because it, it, it harkens back to when we were nomads, and if there's something in the foreground, we feel like we're being protected if there's a bush there or something like that. Anyway, so that book covers a lot of stuff, and patterns like this uh, we pay attention to because if an animal has spots and stuff or like a leopard or a poisonous frog or whatever uh, it alerts a part of our brain to say hey pay attention to that um, do something run away or or be cautious so there's a subconscious reason for for doing these patterns like that uh, so what I did there is I used the airbrush tool uh, well it's the brush tool but the airbrush um, and I made the top half of the, the sky darker. And what you'll notice in real life, if you are outside during the day, you'll look outside and if you look at the horizon, it's actually, the sky is much brighter at the horizon than it is at the top. It's more dark blue at the top. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, do the same thing on the foreground, like that. And later we're also, I also added a, a bit of blue in the, the foreground shadows as well. So if you'll see um, what it was before, like this, and what it is now. Um, and I'm going to use the Mixer Brush tool and sort of blend in on the mask layer. So it's still on the mask layer, and I'm using the Mixer Brush um, for the clouds. That way it has uh, smooth transitions, like blending, like this. 
Um, and then, you know, once you're satisfied with that, you can merge it down, which I'm about to do in a moment. And like this, and like I said earlier, here, let's actually duplicate the original so we have something to compare to. And I'll make a new layer, I'll set it to lighten, and I'll select a blue, you know, maybe a little bit more violet. It's really up to, up to your taste. I mean, more realistically, it's not as violet. Uh, but if you go to any mountain range and you look in the distance, you know, there's going to be blues in the shadows because it's kind of picking up on the atmosphere in the sky. So when you do that, it does push it back into the distance a bit. And, you know, lower the opacity a little bit and flatten it. Um, and automatically it starts to get pushed back. And you could even use the airbrush tool again. What I'm going to do is select the, the base of the mountains. Uh, and this is what, and I'm going to do this based on what I learned from uh, the Alaska trip. And in one of my earlier videos, I kind of took notes about what I was actually seeing in terms of uh, uh, mountains. Also, uh, try to find some reference of actual rocks and mountains because, um, you know, uh, jagged triangular shapes, you know, we that's our kind of default thing we do when we do painting. So you could really change it up if you find interesting looking rocks with cool textures and shapes and you know some some of it's round and then you got like jagged striations and round again um, there's so many different things different things out there that could kind of add to your own signature style and your own preferences so I'm gonna go ahead and make the clouds a little bit brighter I mean the shadow side at least set that to lighten and I'm painting in with uh, the brush the bristle brush that I have in my brush set. And there you go. Yep. And then now we have um, some cool stuff happening. Now if you look at the, the original one that I did, um, it's a bit more purple. Uh, I put some highlights on the bushes in the foreground. Um, and I did want to mention uh, something about the, the ship. And I would... Because right now it feels like it, the painting is about this area, like we're supposed to look here for some reason, but I think if you crop it so it's more like this, now it's for sure going to be about the ship, right? And you can see why that's happening, because with all this breathing room, of course, like we have all these things pointing at it, and you have debris and explosions, but I think too much breathing space can uh, sort of take away from that. So I would crop it like this. Um, if you want to still pull in some stuff into the foreground, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so look up some designs of, of ships and uh, actual maybe helicopters or rescue helicopters. You know, there's always really interesting shapes that you can find to put in your design. Like how does um, you know how do how do the plate how does the plating of the metal connect to each other? Like is there rivets? Is there um, whatever and all that stuff. Uh, also for the the explosions and the debris, I highly recommend checking out a lot of NASA's. Uh, vi videos. There's footage of things breaking back into the atmosphere. You have uh, launches of, of rockets, and you know, the, this looks a bit um, rushed, right? But if you if you kind of just have reference open, and as you're doing this, you ping pong your eyes back and forth, um, you'll start to add a lot of uh, credibility and realism to what it is that you're trying to do. Anyway, a uh, cool piece. Uh, thanks for sending it to me, and. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Thanks for your support, uh, and everyone else who's been uh, supporting me on Patreon as well. Also, if you're supporting me on YouTube, just leaving comments, likes, and all that stuff. I really appreciate it all, and um, definitely stay tuned for more. All right, clickety clicker clickeroo, right?